Now, when you come to a meeting like this, you want to ask yourself, what's your goal? What's your dream? What's your purpose? What's your plan? Why are you here? You know, everywhere you go, I always ask myself, why me? Why am I there? And what does the Lord want to pass across unto the people? Maybe through me. And what's the Lord passing across to me through the people? I'm going to start with Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. We're looking at here from verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey, and drew near, drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the house top to pray about the sixth hour and he became very hungry and would have, and would have eaten but while they made ready he fell into a trance and he saw what heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him and as it had been, as it had been a great sheet neat at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice unto him, tell me out loud. He saw heaven opened. And then he saw all these beasts. In the concept, in the understanding of the Jewish people, some beasts were clean and some beasts were unclean. And then he heard the voice. The voice is coming from where? Coming from heaven. And it says, rise, Peter. He mentioned him by name. Rise, Peter. Kill and eat. But Peter said... Peter said, Peter said, isn't there a contradiction there? He called him Lord. He knew it was the Lord speaking. The same Lord that said in the old covenant, don't eat unclean animals. That same Lord said, Peter, rise up, kill and eat. He recognized it was the voice of the Lord. But this is a man that had said, what I have, I have. And where I'm going, I'm going. Even if the Lord wants to change that direction, I'm going to say no. Even if the Lord himself, the Lord of glory, the Lord of heaven and earth, even if he says, this is what you do now, I'm going to say no. And here it says, not so. He called him Lord, but he still said no. Uh, do you get to the point where you know more than God? You get to the point where here is what the Lord wants to do. This is a new day, Peter. The old covenant is gone. And the God of Israel is not the God of the whole universe. And he wants to reach the whole of the universe. And he wants to reach everybody. And he says, because of that now, I'm sending you to the Gentiles. Actually, Jesus Christ, I told you, want them ahead of time. He shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, and then where? Those are the Gentiles, the unclean people. Those were the people that the Old Testament people will never reckon with, but he told them ahead of time. He said, I'll be, you'll be starting in Jerusalem, you'll not stop there. You'll go to Judea, you'll not stop there. You'll go to Samaria, you'll not stop there. You're going to go to the uttermost part of the earth. And then it says, now Peter, the time has come. Rise, 
kill and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord. Is this the reason why God chose Paul the Apostle? To reach the Gentile world? And this single man, Paul the Apostle, also a Jew, in fact, he was a Pharisee. And he was more serious about the law. And about the concept of the Jewish people more than Peter and the rest of them. He persecuted the church. But the Lord raised him up. And he was the one that eventually reached all these gentle people. Because there is a not so Lord. Think about that. And sometimes as you, as you hear what God is doing in other parts of the world. And uh, you might say not so Lord. The Lord is not going to refuse to save the world just because you are not ready. He will find some other people who are ready. He might find a Paul the Apostle. And when he finds that Paul, as you are still there, and tradition hinders your prayer. Tradition hinders your vision. And tradition hinders what you already prayed for. Revive us, Lord. Revive us, Lord. And now the revival comes. And he says, launch out. And this is what you do. And then you say, ah, my tradition will not permit that. My understanding will not permit that. Then you just cancel your prayer and your dream. Before I go to the message, I want to interpret what I've said unto you. We, earlier this year, I wanted to go to um, Abuja, that's the city in Nigeria, the federal capital territory. I'd been there in, you know, I think 2006, and we used the stadium. When we used the stadium, I was disappointed. I didn't say that. I didn't show that, but I was disappointed. We didn't feel one quarter of the stadium. I'm not used to something like that. Any part of Nigeria I go, normally we feel the whole place overflowing. But this particular time, first day and second day and third day and the fourth, the place was scanty. It grew some great, great miracles still took place, but I felt that we could have reached more people. But uh, since 2006, I'd been going to other places and we just packed the place full. Now, I was to go this March. When I went uh, this March, before going, I called the state of Asia there. I said, now state of Asia, we're not going to do this alone. The way we're going to do this, we're going to get in touch with Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN. And they're going to cooperate with us and you tell them that, you know, I'm coming to Abuja there and we're going to do this and that. And uh, so he called me back and said, sir, the um, chairman of PFN is an ex deeper life. I said, is that so? I said, what's his name? He told me the name. He was the state overseer in Abuja before. But because I transferred him out of Abuja to go to another place, he said, no, I don't accept that. That's why he left the ministry. And then he started his own ministry. And he happens to be pastor in a Pentecostal church. And uh, now he is the chairman of that Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria in FCT. And for us to be able to get to the people and to be able to rally the people together, you have to get the consent and the agreement of the chairman. And so I said, go tell him that his father in the Lord is coming to town. And that, you know, whatever I can do, rally all the people together. When he got to him and told him that I sent him and said, I'm coming to the city and that he should do whatever he can do. He said, that's my father. Everything I ever knew, he taught me. And then he went to PFN and he told them that, you know, we'll be, that we'll be having a program. They took it up. As they took up everything, they rallied around together, number one. I wouldn't do that 10 years ago. You are in deeper life. You left. You are now ex deeper life. Whatever it is you have, I just say, no, you will come back to me. I will not come back to you. You are the one to come to me. But it's a new day. And if you don't have that understanding, and if you cannot forgive him and forget the past, you're going to, he's a gatekeeper. And as the gatekeeper there, 
Now he was, you know, he was here before. He's not here now. And because he's the gatekeeper, and millions of people are inside that place, I need to reach, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Part of the people I'm to reach is inside that cage. And he is the gatekeeper. And even though it was ex his ex deeper life, he says, Daddy, I will open the door for you. I'm a gatekeeper here. Now what am I going to do? Forget the past. This is a new day. And if God is answering your prayer because this is the way he wants to go and say, no, I will not compromise. What's compromise? Are we committing sin? Want to reach the people over there? And this part of every creature? And this is the man, God is, just because he lived deeper life and disagreed with, he didn't disagree with me on doctrine, he dis disagreed with me on transfer. I could have made a mistake in transferring him. And whether mistake or no mistake, this is more than 10 years ago, are we still going to be kind of forcing and getting angry over something that happened 10 years ago? Forget all about that. And let us move on. And so we, we got started, and the Lord did some things we've never seen. In fact, you know, in that meeting, there were people, they just came there, and they will sometimes uh, put their telephone near a microphone, and the sick person was in Ghana, and the moment we were praying, just like that, the fellow got healed. There was a man uh, in March when we got there. This man was dying. When they took him to the hospital, the, father, the wife was there. The children were there. And uh, when the doctor saw him and his condition, they said, Madam, this one is reaching up. There's nothing that can be done. And eventually, that woman brought the clothes of that man to the crusade. But this, in fact, we held the crusade in about, I think, five places. This is the first time we'll do that. We just went to this place, had a crusade two nights, this place two nights, that place two nights, that other place two nights. And uh, as she raised up the clothes, the children were with the man in the hospital. This is a man they had reaching up. When we said the final in Jesus' name, we we'll pray with that man raising up the clothes, the man got up from the hospital bed. And uh, what if I didn't allow that ex deeper life man to get involved? Think about that. That man could have died. Well, lost, you could have lost many, many souls. And that's the reason why, in a new day, when something is being done, you're not going to say, Not so, Lord. And the Lord might not be speaking to you from heaven. The Lord might use me to tell you that this is what you do. And then you say, But we are not doing like that before. And since we are not doing like that before, we want to do that now. Not me, Lord. Not so, Lord. You'll miss out on the plan of God. And I'm here to tell you that you need to open up and relax. And act as if you didn't know anything. And if God is speaking to us and we are speaking to you and we're saying, this is what you do, you are not going to say, not so, Lord. But eventually we're finished. And uh, then I came back uh, to Lagos on the 5th, uh, I think, on, yes, on the 5th of uh, April. And then you, you're, every, this is uh, now public, everybody knows that, you know, Mommy Kumuyi went home to be with the Lord April 11th. And just about a week after I came back. And then eventually Abuja people said they still wanted me back. And I was thinking, uh, you know, for me, I had no problem that, you know, mommy went to heaven. And since she went to heaven, I should be up and doing whatever I wanted to do, I will do. But I thought, what will people think if I just keep running around now? Would they think that, look at this man, he's not even feeling the absence of his wife. So I first of all said, I told the overseer there, privately I said no, that I would have wanted to come. But because really I'm, I'm okay, I'm happy that mommy has gone to be with the Lord in heaven. But if I go, what will people think? And I felt, later I then said, what will people think? That looks like Peter's spirit. What will the Jews think? What will the people say? So I called him, I said, it's not what the people say now. God wants me to come, I'll come. But then, I'm still on this not so Lord. Eventually, instead of just limiting it to PFN, 
our brother, the overseer, went to Christian Association of Nigeria. Christian Association of Nigeria has Catholics there. Has the white garment people there. You know white garment? The people that don't wear shoes when they go to church. And all kinds of people they had there. And so eventually, he, when he went, the first of all, I get a deeper life. You think you are the one, the only one going to heaven. Why didn't you come before? You think we don't want to be born again? Catholic people told him and said, don't you think we too need to be born again? Why are you keeping yourself away? And if you stay away like that, who will ever show us the way? Then he called me in Lagos and he said, this is what Catholic people are saying. I said, that's true. They want to be born again, that we should give them the chance. And so everybody rallied around. Then Khan then told PFN and said, PFN, remove your hand. You are small. That Khan, Christian Association of Nigeria, is the big umbrella body that is bringing this man now to Abuja. And the PFN people, they gladly accepted because they knew this will open the way for the gospel to get to the Catholics and the white government people and all that. And eventually, we went to Abuja in June. But to, I'll come back to continue the story. Uh, but at the end, after everything has taken place, uh, one of the white garment people that actually was very instrumental to bring in a lot of people from their area, he had one of our magazines that we had published 1998 with him. And when we were kind of settling, uh, you know, how to, what we have done, evaluating what had been done, uh, this one rose up, is in charge of mobilization, this one in charge of publicity, that one in charge of finance and all that. And the Catholic uh, father was there, the chairman of Khan in FCT, and uh, the Archbishop of uh, Khan is also Catholic. And he had, you know, come to the open field to say, all of you Catholics who are here, I want you to know that Catholic endorses this program. All of you pay attention. We're talking about Jesus. And whatever they tell you, listen and give uh, your heart to everything that he said. When he said that, then he went back. He didn't hear the rest, but he released all the Catholic people to listen. What else are you looking for? The gate man came to open the gate and he said, I'm going. The gate is open for you. When you're through, I'll come back and lock the gate. And um, so... But in that meeting, one of the people stood up. He happens to be a white garment person. And he had a magazine of Deeper Life that were published in 1998. And so he said, please, uh, now the program is over. But I want to tell you, that's what's facing me and talking to me, saying that um, my people, when I carried this thing on my head and shoulders and I started publicizing, this is what my people... They gave me this magazine, and they opened, and I read where you spoke against the white garment churches. Black and white, here it is. And now, you call us together, and all of us who are calling you are Father in the Lord. What have you got to say? So I then said, I stood up and I said, when did we publish that magazine? It said 1998. I said, tell me now between 1998 and this time, how many years? He said 11 years. And I said, that's what you are still fussing about. So I said, here is Father so-and-so. That's a Catholic. Here is so-and-so. He is Anglican. When the Anglican church started, they fought against.